Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Ooh. <laughs> How y'all doing? It's your girl, Miss Honey, here with a quick video. This is sort of an impromptu video. Um, you guys may know already this whole story about Portia Williams, who is, I think, the great granddaughter or granddaughter of Hosea Williams here, uh, who was an, um, civil rights icon in Atlanta. And, um, she also is now one of the lead peach holders on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I used to do reviews for Real Housewives of Atlanta, but I could not any longer. Um, reality TV is just put a bad taste in my mouth. Like, uh, you know, when it was really reality TV, I enjoyed it. But now that I know most of it is kind of orchestrated, it, it just lost something for me, but I digress. And actually that point might play into this video, but what we're really talking about here is the fact that Portia Williams has come out that she is in love with one of the friends of the show's husband. Now, this friend of the show is Fallon. Fallon, um, I don't think is a peach holder. You guys correct me down below if you know. Um, you watch the show and you know whether she was a peach holder or not. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, she's in love with this woman's, they're saying ex-husband because he filed for divorce in January, but I was watching Layla Lynn's video and she was talking about how she went and looked at the court records and that, um, he retracted. So he, he put in for the divorce and then he retracted that paperwork and then he went back and reinstated it. Right. So, um, it has come out just like overnight that Portia Williams herself on her page, um, she has a picture up and then there's the caption. Uh, the picture is of this woman's husband, whose name is Simon. And then her daughter, um, Pilar's father, who's the hot dog King, Dennis, who she was previously engaged to on the other side of her and she's wedged right there in the middle, but she is, has her hand and there's a, you know, a pretty big rock on that hand on Simon's chest, you know, and she's just talking about confirming their relationship and confirming that he and Dennis get along and, you know, they're helping to co-parent the, uh, Pilar, their little girl who's super adorable, by the way. And you guys know, I don't say that about a lot of children. Uh, anyway, so, um, she's come out and said this, of course, there's tons of backlash, of course, tons of backlash. I also watched Tabitha Speaks, who is formerly Beautiful Soul Speaks. Um, she did a video and she's also going to do an update, a live that, um, will air, will be airing when this uploads. So you guys go and check Tabitha Speaks out and checks out. I'm sure the conversation is going to be popping over there and I'm going to be doing my nails and down in the chat while finishing my nails down in the chat while she talks about it. So I want to get this video wrapped up pretty quickly for you guys. But I immediately said to myself, huh, I wonder why she's speaking out and he's not speaking out. Like, why aren't they speaking out together? Well, of course, if you just wait a few minutes, things will evolve. Like this is going to, people are going to be talking about this all week and things going to be involved, evolving all week and coming out about it, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, but he did do a statement and, uh, he did say that he loves her. He said that he thought that when he, when he got married to the first wife, Fallon, he thought that was going to be his wife, wife, like thought that she was going to be, you know, his main squeeze, so to speak. I don't know what that is, but anyway, you know, she was going to be the one and apparently she ended up not being the one. 
because when he met Portia, Port he knew that Portia was the one. He never he said that he it was never a second thought about um, if he was going to get married again, but when he knew he was going to be, he looks like he might be like African descent, you know, that type of thing. Um, and they enjoy being married, you know, in some cases they enjoy being married to multiple women. Some of them have those, you know, perks. <laughs> and, um, so there's that conversation. So he seemed very supportive. He talked very lovingly about Portia. He said that they both have done the work. Now she said they have been dating for about a month. That was a little bit of the scuttlebutt. Like y'all getting it, y'all get together already. Like he's not even divorced, divorced. Now he's not divorced. It's not final, but it was all put in motion pretty quickly. And it's expected to be wrapped up pretty quickly because this gentleman, Simon had a prenup. And so, um, it seems like it was very quickly. Well, I was thinking to myself, Hey, it's, it's, it's quick in terms of you're saying that you both did the work on yourselves individually and now are becoming one. And it's going to be this really stellar, super great thing because you guys have both worked on each other. Now that's a lot to do in a month. That's a lot to do in a month, right? Like working on yourself and getting your ish together to, to, in order to be enough, well enough to be tied to someone else's life and all of their baggage that they bring to the table. Now, that we're talking about years of therapy, <laughs> but they were able to do it in a month, right? <laughs> they were able to uh, come full circle and become whole, happy, healthy individuals in a full month. So there's that whole point. So uh, the fact that this was a woman that was supposed to be her friend, which I don't really, I don't, I don't even think that needs discussion because these, none of these ladies really seem like they're diehard friends. Maybe one or two of them are, you know, because of longevity, they've just known each other for a long amount of time. But for the most part, uh, these ladies are coworkers. So the fact that she was at this lady's house, that's where they wanted her to film. Uh, they test driving Fallon to see if they want Fallon to be eventually a peach holder. I don't know if she will be. Portia has more seniority, so they'll probably drop Fallon um, from the show as a as a as a friend of the show. But anyway, so. Um, yeah, that she moved so fast that, that one that was someone else's husband, somebody who's supposed to be her friend and two that, that she moved really fast. And, um, I think it was beautiful soul speaks that was talking about Tabitha speaks that was talking about, um, girl code and all of that stuff. My whole point in doing this video is to point out what I think is the glaringly obvious, but very rarely will you have people talk about some of the things that run through my brain, like, um, desperation, you know what I mean? Like the thing of it is, is that we used to believe that having a vagina was powerful, right? Because, um, females are the only ones that are able to, um, carry a child, bring a child to life. Now we know that that's not always true in the animal world because they're, you know, we know about seahorses and all of that, but in the human world, females are the only ones that, that can carry and bring a child. Right. And then we all know about the whole Proverbs 31 better than rubies and diamonds. And she does this and she does that. And she multiplies and she adds to, and she is wonderful and she is great and yada, yada, yada. Well, all of that is out the window. Dave Chappelle did a skit a few years back about being a lady. And uh, <laughs> it was this joke about a woman saying, uh, I, I'm not a, a hoe. It's like, well, you're, you may not be a hoe, but you're wearing a hoe's costume. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a whole thing. Anyway, put it down below if you remember that joke. Right. It might have been Chris Rock, but I believe it was Dave Chappelle. So anywho, um, you know, women now a days and it hasn't it, it 
let me say this. Men have always won the game, right? Because the standards that are put out there in terms of who you are character wise, who you are um, spiritually, who you are um, ethically, morally, uh, the standards are set, right? Traditionally are set and written in stone. Those standards are, women are held higher to those standards than men ever will be. So women all will always be behind the eight ball, right? If it's not men that are criticizing us for our behavior and our choices, it's other <clears throat> women who are criticizing us for our behavior and our choices, right? Whether it's hair, skin, nails, how you dress, how you speak, how well educated you are, the type of job you have, where you live, how you raise your children, you know, um, what your children look like, what you drive, what your children drive, you know what I'm saying? All of this stuff, we are held to a different standard, even by other women, black, white, yellow, green, blue, whatever. Okay. At the same time, we are so busy, um, being behind the eight ball, we are still so busy holding ourselves to those standards. You know what I'm saying? And and um, some of those standards, right? Talking about the ride or die girls, right? Women are acting out in such a desperate way now. It, it It's not it seems more prevalent now, but it's always been that way, right? Remember Barbara calling Shirley? Y'all remember Shirley calling Barbara? Whichever, hey, Barbara, this Shirley. Hey, Shirley, this Barbara. You know what I'm saying? A uh, woman calling another woman about a man, right? Uh, we see it in Dream Girls where a man comes along and a woman forsakes her friends and her group, you know, because of this man who is also the manager, yada, yada, yada. Right, we see it all the time where women put themselves second. They put um, their own personal standards and agendas second um, for a man. Like I said, that ride or die woman, a woman who uh, will put a Glock nine in her vagina and two packs of kilos and ride in a plane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like women who street walk and then sell their bodies and then give their money to, to a pimp. Like our personal standards for ourselves when it comes to a man goes out the window. We, I say it's more prevalent now because we see it more now. It's all digitized, right? We see it, it's in our face. Women shaking their butts. Like the twerking is the biggest thing around. And it's all about, um, women shaking their butts. There are a few men out there who shake their butts better than women, but for the most part, it's about popping this body part in a way that, you know, suggests that, you know, you 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 can pop on other things just as well, right? And it's become like the calling card. We see kids do it. We see moms do it with their daughters. We see it on um on uh in songs up and and Meg the Stallion has made this whole career about being a hot girl and being a writer and 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 being a savage and all of this stuff is this gives me this sense of desperation and so bringing it back to Portia and Simon you know not that she should have to wait not that he should have to wait but seriously, how much work have you done on yourself in order to go into a relationship with someone? You can say, I have these feelings. He's saying, this is my soulmate. This is my soul tie. And she's literally saying the same thing too. But it's really all about you positioning yourself in this position of desperation. Are you going to get a prenup too? Because the prenup basically means um, if we break up, I'm, I'm not going to see about you. I'm not going to take care of you like that. I'll take care of you maybe in this limited way, depending on what the prenup is, but I'm not gonna, I'm not tied enough to you to be responsible for you going forward. A lot of men are doing this because they know the likelihood of a woman getting married again and them getting out of that alimony is slim and none. And the reason why is that 
men don't value women, period. We are considered a commodity. I said that whole Dave Chappelle thing because we are considered a commodity. We are considered a resource. It goes back to my reviews about Handmaid's Tale and, um, and that whole dichotomy, how it's all set up. It, we could be in that same place because as women, we are always behind the eight ball. One of the reasons why is because we are considered a commodity and we treat ourselves like a commodity, right? And, and if we are not putting ourselves in a place to be a good resource, that goes back to the Proverbs, um, reference that I made, if we're not putting ourselves in a position where we are being humble and subservient, then we're considered to, to be having more male characteristics. You trying to be the man and I'm the man and you trying to busy be the man. When in fact, we've had to take on those roles because we have been left by men goes back to what I was saying about those traditional standards. The mom is supposed to take care of the kids and the husband in the home. And the husband is supposed to go out and work. At the same time, what do you do when your husband has the option of picking up and leaving and you are considered a pariah if you pick up and leave the husband with the kids and then you go out? You're considered a pariah. You get the scarlet letter, right? as trifling and, 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 you know, uh, the person that abandons their children, what mother, what decent mother would abandon their children, right? So it goes back to those men aren't held to those same standards. Men are not held to those, to the standard of getting with one woman and riding it out with that one woman. Men are not held to the same standard in terms of being all in for that woman, no matter what, whether she gets sick or fat or, um, you know, can't bear children or whatever. Men aren't held. Now I'm not saying all men don't do it. I'm just saying men are not held to that standard, right? We overlook it. We pass it off a lot quicker. People were more shocked about um, Jada Pinkett Smith's entanglement than they are about anything that Will Smith did. You know, Will Smith came out of that thing looking, smelling like a rose, right? Jada Pinkett Smith will always be known as the entanglement lady, right? And likewise, Portia is going to be drug. She is going to be um, ostracized. And even if they go on to be married for another 50 years, happily having children, uh, uh, building beautiful homes and businesses and, and, and adding to, the, to this world wonderfully, even if this situation turns out to be the exception to the rule, which the rule is how you got him is how you're going to lose him. Right. Okay. But even if this relationship turns out to be the exception to that rule, we will always remember her, remember her and, and, and reference her to a, as a low down man stealer. You know what I'm saying? Like it's always going to be that way. Not just because from the male perspective, we're perceived that way, but because as women, we present ourselves that way. We, more women are going to ostracize Portia than they ever will Simon. More men are going to ostracize Portia or, or um, be misogynistic in regards to her, be, be uh, over, you know, um, sexualize her before they will say, man, you low down, you barely, you, you're not even divorced from this other woman. You're not going to see a lot of that. You're going to see a lot of people dragging Portia, right? And I'm not saying what Portia is doing is right. It may be right for her. It's not right for me. You know, I'm not saying I wouldn't marry Fallon's ex-husband. I'm saying we would have to put some time and distance between what you had going on with this woman. And, and I believe they have children, if I'm not mistaken, 
what you had going on with this woman, you have to do a lot of turning and changing before I consider you to be somebody that's, that's for me. I'm coming off single and you coming off married. It's weird. And it puts stressors, I think, on the relationship as a whole. It's not for me. I certainly wouldn't date um, or, or, you know, be involved with someone who was with a friend of mine, a bona fide friend of mine. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, maybe if I'm 80 years old and she's passed on and my mate's passed on or whatever, maybe, I, you know, I don't see a problem with that, but I'm not trying to get with your husband ever, ever, ever. Like, I don't even look at him like that. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't see it. But even if they're not friends, I just don't think it's healthy to have someone who's not even fully divorced yet and you're trying to get involved in a relationship. It happens. And some of them are a success. More oftentimes than not, it you like I said, how you got him is how you tend to lose him. Okay? But I want us to just be mindful because it is more of this desperate attempt for women to seek some sort of value. And one of the ways women um, feel as though they increase their value is by marrying, is by being mated up with someone. It's the fir- one of the first insults someone will hurl at you as a single person. You ain't got no man. You ain't got nobody. That means there's not someone else out there of the opposite sex um, that loves you that thinks you're valuable enough to marry, that thinks you're valuable enough to mate up with. When the fact of the matter is there are men that link up and get in covenant connections with women all the time and they have zero respect for them, okay? It doesn't matter how pretty you are, how successful, how beautiful, how banging your body is, Beyonce, Halle Berry, um, countless other women. I mean, look at Jennifer... Uh, not Jennifer, I was going to say Jennifer Hudson, but Mary J. Blige. I mean, come on. She been with men that beat her, that cheat her, that, that fleece her, the whole nine. It's, it's happened repeatedly. It's happened over and over again. A lot of it is our fault. A lot of it as women is our fault because we act in desperation. When you act in desperation and a lack of faith, you fall blindly for any and everything. You will go to the ends of the earth to make sure that others, oftentimes men, are pleased with you. And they validate that pleasure by saying, you know what, I'm going to be seen with you. And I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to call you my girlfriend. And then if you're really good, if you're just right, Okay, I'm going to make you my wife. Okay, I'm going to make you my wife, right? You got women that are working and they have a piece of man that, that is on the sofa all day. Okay, and and, and they got children, uh, bringing children into that relationship. A lot of times they're leaving their children with this man and this man is victimizing their children as well. We are, women are seen as commodities, as, as a resource, like livestock, like cattle, like property, right? We got whole countries out here, Iran, Pakistan, um, Afghanistan, these types of countries out here where, um, if a woman is raped by a man, her husband has the right to not only divorce her, but he can, he can, he can end her life for being violated by someone else because it brings shame on his household. You know what I'm saying? It's like my dog bit your child. I'm going to put my dog down, throw that dog out, cast that dog out, get you a better dog, get you a better cow, get you a better camel, get you a better set of goats, right? Wives, a I E wives, right? You know, it, this is very, very true from the male perspective, but also from the female perspective, a lot of this we welcome in. We welcome it in by our behavior. We welcome it in by what we accept as women, 
as women, if this man, Simon, is this wonderful, if he is this valuable, if he is to be cherished, if he's your soul tie, your soulmate, the man for you, and you're the woman for him, and it is, it is, it is sealed in the sinews of your very, very muscular system. <laughs> Baby, it could stand up to a little time. It could stand up to a little evaluation. It doesn't have to be microwaved and repackaged so quickly, right? You can wait a little bit, sis. You've been waiting a while. You could wait a little bit. You could. But why deny your flesh? Why? This is what I want. And it makes you look bad. It makes him look bad, definitely. Definitely makes him look bad make you look bad, right? But you're the only one, Portia Williams, who is going to be to be um marginalized and scrutinized and and um victimized, demonized. Okay? You're the only one. He's not going to be. I mean, some people might say some things, but baby, he's not going to be drug like you going to be drug. Trust me. Don't matter because it's 50 million other women out here who will see that, who will wag their finger and who will go and, and, um, then victimize themselves by getting involved with somebody who is lesser than. I have a, a, a friend who's, who I've known for a very long time since I was a small child. Okay. She's older than me. Well, she went to school with a girl who became a lawyer great lawyer and through one way or another she ended up getting involved with this man that was in jail and this male who was in jail I think she may have represented him at some point uh you know co-counsel or something she ends up falling in love with this man he woos her and y'all know ain't nothing more faithful than a man in jail everybody <laughs> baby okay and uh, this woman lost her law license and her freedom because she was sneaking drugs in there into the jail when she would go see him, okay? She would be sneaking things in to him in her pocketbook. You know what I mean by pocketbook? Y'all know what I mean by pocketbook, right? And also, she would be engaging in, uh, this was back in the day, so things aren't as strict as they are now, aren't as as on camera as they are now she would um, be sitting on his lap and allowing him to insert himself in her in her anus she got busted doing all of this right she got caught doing all of this in the waiting room in the in the in the visitation area <laughs> and they and they snatched a law license from her and threw her in jail she threw all that away for a convict, a convict. You got degreed professional women who wallow, who wallow with men who are covered in fleas and ticks. And they don't mind picking them ticks. They don't mind getting bit by them ticks and them fleas. They don't mind that it brings their property value down. They don't mind any of those things. Oh yes, we are considered a commodity. We are considered cattle. We are considered livestock, a resource to be mined, to be bought, to be sold, to be traded, to be upgraded. But at the same time, we allow ourselves. We allow ourselves with our behavior. It, it's inherent in women. We love passionately. We love deeply. And again, a lot of our value is wrapped up in what a male thinks about us. Right. How a male perceives us, whether it is our daddy or our pastor or the man across the street or the guy down the hall at work, whatever. We want to be considered beautiful, alluring, valuable, worthy, uh, uh, um, validated. A lot of our behaviors are because of these reasons. A lot of how we are treated is because of how we allow ourselves to be treated. 
And now that we speak up more and we are asserting ourselves more through examples by living or examples by speaking or examples by doing, we are considered out of our place. We are considered aggressive. We are considered uh, to be acting more like a man than a woman. Right? That's my two cents. Y'all tell me what you think. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, yes. We are definitely, definitely fourth, fifth, secondhand citizens. Okay? In terms of what what we're considered, uh, really considered as valuable. Not all women are. There are some men who have figured it out. There are some men who tie themselves to a good woman and she ties herself to him. and They make beautiful music together. You guys check out um, random TV reviews, Stanley and Lynette. Not saying they don't have their issues, not saying they don't have their woes, but they are fully committed to one another. He considers her to be his queen and she, her, him, her king, right? It's not all people. It's not all women. It's not all men. But by and large, it is off balance. It is off balance. And it is not, it has always been sort of this way, except biblically speaking, it was in a more traditional way. But still, even biblically, women were treated like product, livestock. Even how we say women were valuable in Proverbs. Um, it is, it's, it's a beautiful sonnet. It's absolutely uh, true in every way. But at the same time, if you, if you hold your head to the side and squint your eyes, it does seem like you're talking about <laughs> a thoroughbred. <laughs> A valuable commodity to have, right? Okay, y'all tell me what you think. Y'all tell me what you think. I I don't have a solution for it except there has to be a standard for all of us as humans, for men um, and for women. But just speaking as a woman, because I am one, um, know your own value and worth. And don't be so desperate that it's a hard thing to overcome, right? It's a hard thing to overcome. Um, Don't be so desperate that you will jump in head first in the middle of any situation without taking a step back. And you can take that step back without being demonstrative. You can take that step back and it not come from a place of bitterness. Right. You can take a step back and say, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold up. I'm going to hold up a little bit. Let's let's slow this thing down. You can take that step back. You can say not tonight. I'm not ready. You can say not this month. I'm not ready. You can say um, I'd love to, but I better not. Because you want to make sure that you're not taking your pearls and, and, and hand feeding them to a swine. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Y'all tell me what you think. Y'all put it down below. Again, um, I'm not condemning Portia. I'm not condemning Simon. I'm not. I, 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 anything wrapped in flesh. But as my mama say, is liable to do anything. I wish them the best. I wish Fallon the best. I wish all the children involved the best. But, you know, we have to really think about our choices and not just when they turn into consequences. That's all I'm saying. Y'all tell me what you think. Please put it down below. Don't forget to rate and comment and subscribe on this video. I'd love to have you. And until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I holler.